Happy Sunday, it's Peña all the Black Pen. Um, first and foremost, I am not Christian. I used to be Christian, I was baptized Roman Catholic. And in 2006 was the day I left Christianity. Uh, I'd read the Bible, I decided to become an atheist, I realized Christianity is not for me. I went through this whole journey of spirituality where today, my own religion of penalism is turning five, if not six years old this year. I'll just, I'll just check. I think it was founded in June 2018. So yeah, I think I'll do the maths. It's not really important. 2018, 2016, not sure. Um, I'm not Christian, so Easter weekend is not for me. And I see a lot of people trying to wish me a happy Easter weekend. I'm not, not Christian, so I don't celebrate Easter. Um, there are a lot of people who are fake Christians. <laughs> and they are celebrating Easter, but everything about the way they live their lives is unchristian-like. Um, but to all my true Christian friends, to all my Christian brothers and sisters, um, I hope you guys will have a great Easter weekend commemorating um, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, um, and the whole story around there. Uh, Easter, unfortunately, has been infiltrated by paganism with the whole idea of uh, uh, Easter bunny and these Easter eggs and the hunts, you know, all these things that don't really make sense. It's like how paganism infiltrated uh, Christmas, the birth of baby Jesus in Bethlehem in a manger. Now all of a sudden you've got fat Santa and gifts and reindeers, etc. But to the true Christians, I hope you've had a good weekend. I hope you use this time to pray, to get in touch with your faith, um, to revive your faith. I feel sorry for the people that have lost their lives. We heard of a really, really tragic um, bus accident, if I'm not mistaken. 45 people died. Um, I posted what was called an insensitive tweet about this. I stand by my tweet, even though it was not meant to hurt anyone. It saddens me that year in, year out, people will die during Easter weekend. People that are going to church the whole weekend. It really pisses me off because it's, it's insanity. You will keep doing the same things and wonder why the outcomes are, are not changing. There are certain ways to praise and worship. And I don't know if this thing of everyone being on the roads, driving to these churches, um, etc., etc., and maybe speeding, driving late or early uh, is worth it. I don't know if it's in the spirit of Christianity. I don't know if it's in the spirit of the Christian God. I don't know if it's in the spirit of Jesus Christ. I think there needs to be a real conversation around worshiping Jesus and Christ um, around the Easter weekend in a way that is healthier for everyone. But anyways, to all my true Christian friends, supporters, I hope you guys will have a great and blessed Easter weekend. I'm making this uh, live because I want to celebrate and congratulate my brother, U Sbu Sisto Liope, uh, DJ Sbu. Something that's busy chowing me here. Of course, now that I look down, it's gone. I think there's a fly that's bugging me. I want to celebrate and congratulate my brother, Sbu Sisto Liope, DJ Sbu, on his recent uh, signing with Radio 2000 to take over Clenzito. Uh, Glenn Lewis uh, on the breakfast show on Radio 2000. Radio 2000 is a national station like Metro FM, like I think Ukozi FM, I think 5 FM and a couple of the others. There are regional radio stations of which I think Power FM is one of them. I think Jacaranda is another one. Um, Good Hope. Um, I think Ikakasi, I'm not sure. You can find them on the DSTV bouquets, but you don't just switch on the radio and they play anywhere in the country. Radio 2000 is nationwide and it's it's a pretty dope station um fat joe was on it at some point uh clenzito is pretty dope i i stand to be corrected i think david mashabella of um the 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 king david podcast i think he might be on radio 2000 as well um but yeah shout out to dj sbu and i'm making this video to congratulate him to raise some of the <laughs> some of the wild things that people were saying on twitter x and also to raise some of my wishes and some of my concerns or thoughts around Smooth's new gig. So we'll start with the haters, because, you know, give haters a bit of their time, you know, so that they don't tweet in vain. A lot of people are calling out to DJ Smooth for going back to radio as a hustler who keeps telling people that they must focus on building businesses. And some reference the 2017 tweet, which is a quote that is quite popular in the world of how a job is what they give you to steal away from you building your own business and how he's always telling people to hustle and at times in the past people have asked him don't you want to go back to radio 
And he said that he doesn't want to go back to radio. He's happy podcasting. He's happy being free. He gets to record when he wants. He gets to focus on his other businesses, etc. And it kind of looks like he's sold out. Now he's gone back to, to radio. Mainstream radio. Um, Sizwe Jomo, I think, is someone who... There was some potential beef thing looking like on Twitter last year. Sizwe Jomo says some things about DJ Spoo. DJ Spoo responded saying, look, Sizwe Jomo, it's love, bro. I love you. Um, it's not the way you think. And, and, and. But Sizwe Jomo had said, look, I think Spoo might go back to radio. And it seems he's been vindicated. And he said, I called it, but uh, congrats to DJ Spoo. Um, there were people that were saying Spoo's run out of money. Uh, he's, gone back to he's gone back to corporate because he doesn't have money. Things are not looking well. Um, yeah, man, and that look, life is long. <laughs> you might think you're hustling and then some point you have to go back and, and you know. I've, I've gotten to know DJ Spoo over the last two years and I've been very privileged to be close to him outside of the work that we've been doing to get a, a, a snapshot into his personal life, his life as a father, uh, to Waradwa, his daughter, um, a snapshot into his business story outside of what he shows on camera, listening to him behind the scenes on maybe his tax struggles with SARS, um, some of the business deals that have gone right or gone wrong, um, what happened at Massive Metro, which was an online radio station, which kind of struggled. Um, I saw some people linking DJ Spoo to Thibaut Touch, who also tried Touch, Touch Radio, which didn't work, and he went back to mainstream. He's on Metro FM now. Uh, Gareth Cliff also has got Cliff Central, which didn't really work as online radio, but now he podcasts with Cliff Central, and they've just converted to the real network, where he's added a podcast with Waras, Warwick Stock, and PH. They've got a new podcast. Please go and check it out. Um, I got to know Spoo, man, and Spoo is an underrated, underappreciated legend in this country. And what tends to happen with people like Smu is they have all kinds of different people that have opinions about them. They've got haters, you know. I think anyone who's doing anything progressive tends to have haters. And there've been many scandals linked to him from Uzahara, uh, you know, being accused of being umzegezege, which he still denies. Um, what happened at TS Records with him and TK, um, his tax issues, um, what else? Hugging trees, you know, etc., etc. Um, he's built more fire into a recognized beverage business in this country. He set up TK, uh, TS Records with TK Ngiza. They signed big artists, Zege Zege, Brown Dash, Pro Kid, Zahara. Um, he was on Friends Like These, which was big for him. I know he still speaks about it fondly. He was a huge, huge legend in radio. From YFM to Kozi FM. Um, I think he was on Metro at some point. Um, he's been putting hustlers on. He's been promoting hustlers before they made it. Abo Likau at Drip. Abo Theo at Batu. He's always championing for pro-black. He's always championing for bi-local. He's always championing consciousness. Uh, he brings on African spirituality gurus about Joshua Maponga, Mkulun Tsingiza, Zed Koko Dineo, Zed Koko Skoteni. He, he put me on, on his platform and people, many people didn't know me. Um, he's given Nota a platform, even though Nota is successful in his own right. He genuinely cares about the upliftment of black people and young, young black people. Robot Boy is another guy that he put on. He's a serious underappreciated legend and a lot of people spend a lot of time laughing at him, bashing him, calling him dirty because he's decided to de decolonize his appearance. He used to be metrosexual with the short hair, clean shaven with the suit. Now he's decolonized his appearance. He has dreads, he has inchebe. But anyone that is close to Usbu will know that Usbu smells fresh, always clean and fresh, exercises and gyms, very health conscious and conscious about his diet, very pan-Africanist in his view. Um, very passionate and patriotic man about South African South Africans, even the ones that hate on him. He tries his best to like give them shout outs and to hope that one day they'll, they'll rise up. My favorite radio show of all time was the DJ Spoo Breakfast Show on YFM. This was back in 2008 when I was doing my honors in accounting at the University of Johannesburg. I'd wake up in the morning and they'd start off with a prayer, they'd play some gospel, Spoo would bring on hustlers, um, he speaks fondly about, I think, his time at Metro where he brought in a lot of business people to come in for a business segment and that's how he networked. 
I would be inspired going about my business too. I was hustling at the time. I was doing ads. I was part of an agency. I was selling my books. I just published Uktandi Langa, my first book. Um, I was selling various things on the side. I had a dream of having my own fish and chip shop, which would actually eventually materialize in 2012. And DJ Spoo is someone that's inspired me and so many other hustlers for a really long time. And I don't care if he goes back into radio. I don't care if he becomes broke. I don't care if he gets into serious debt. I will always respect and admire DJ Spoo. Number one Knox man. Number one hustler. You know, uh, loves Jay-Z. I, um, I, I, sell, I sell ice to an Eskimo. I sell water to a well. I'm a hustler, baby. I'll, I'll sell fire in hell or something like that. Put me anywhere on God's green earth. I'll triple my worth. Um, Spoo's a hustler. He's a capitalist. But he's a, he's a conscious capitalist. He's got SLEF, the Spusiso Liope Education Fund, if I'm not mistaken. He's given scholarships, spoken at schools. He's done charity work. I know he's kind of not invested much in it as much. I know when you get busy, with like with me and the Mamsi Mlocha Foundation, you sometimes don't get to invest in, in some of those charity initiatives, but, but we try. He's put on kids that film, edit. I mean, I, on his behalf, I give a shout out to Justice Shabalala, Justino Productions. He started off working with Smoo. I joined them at the Hustlers Corner. He's gone on to film for Kokos Koteni, for Promise M. He started his own podcast called um, Justify. I know he films from Kululia Gonkeu as well and Itiski, Itiski TV. Um, He's worked with the kids at Amped. He's put them on. Um, he works with different people, man. Like, I know it's weird, right? But like, Smoo genuinely cares. He cares about making money. He cares about making an impact. He cares about being a boss. You now we speak about Dame Dash. He cares about being a boss. But he also cares about putting people on. And he cares about investing in people where he can. You may not like him. You may, not th you may think he's made mistakes. You may think... Um, there were some deals that went shoddy that we may or may not understand, but he's, be, he's tried to be open and honest and forthcoming about many things in his life. And through living his life and being attacked, we get to watch and we get to learn. I mean, you look at how U U Jacob Zuma, ex-president Jacob Zuma, the leader of Mkonto Isis now, in real time, we got to watch him be crucified, get crucified on TV, print, by opposition parties, everything so that we can learn. DJ Spoo is in that same WhatsApp group. So I just want to say congrats, man. Um, I'd spoken to him at some point in the past about him potentially going back to radio. Um, I'm glad that he's doing it. I know it's his first love. He also DJs as well. He released a song last year with a beautiful lady from Kenya. Um, I, I know he's going to make a huge success of it. And I look forward to what he has to offer. Some of the thoughts and maybe concerns and my wishes. So some of the thoughts are, I wonder if Gareth Cliff is going to see this and consider going back to radio or get given an opportunity. I wonder if DJ Fresh with uh, What A Week um, is going to consider going back to radio. Uh, D uh, Thibaut Touch has gone back to radio. David Mashabela is on radio and he podcast, so... Maybe also like Usol Penduga, who's on podcast and show, DJ Spoo will carry on straddling both worlds. He'll do radio on Radio 2000, and he'll also podcast on The Hustler's Corner, which means we get the best of both worlds. Um, but I wonder if we're going to be seeing a whole lot more radio people going back after they left, uh, because they thought they were going to make it in online radio or in podcasting, and it's a different world. I have huge respect for the big dog, DJ Fresh, but you look at his numbers on What A Week, and I can imagine that he's probably highly disappointed in himself because he's a huge brand, but our podcast hasn't translated yet into what he's trying to create. Same thing can be said of Gareth Cliff as well. DJ Spoo made a huge success of podcasting. I think the Hustlers Corner, if I were to guess, maybe it's at like 280,000 subscribers. It's huge. When I joined, they were at like 45,000. And then when I left the Hustlers Corner, we had, I think, over 100,000, if not over 150,000. So he's grown it very very well and it's gotten a feel of podcasting some people are complaining on twitter that so radio is going to keep recycling the same people are there, is there no young talent you're bringing back dj smoo which is a fair concern we speak about open up the industry but as i said smoo puts people on and i can only imagine how many young people that you've probably never heard of smoo is going to be bringing on to his breakfast show in various 
capacities on the show. Um, that's the one thought, if radio people are going to go back to radio. Another thought is whether Sbu is going to go back to the old formulas of radio um, with the links and the music, etc., etc. Or if, he's, if the agreement he's got is to bring in a podcast kind of feel into radio. It was one of the things I think disappointed a lot of chillers, seeing Osol Penduga again on KFM, but not being Sol Penduga. Um, he was with Dineo at some point, uh, at some point he was with Sizwe Roma, but he was literally, as much as he's a sidekick to make G on podcast and chill, but he'd do the traffic on KFM, he'd literally get to ask a few questions, and he wasn't free, because it's not like a, a long format, free range space. Mainstream radio is not like that. Waras has spoken about this. Waras with the pet, uh, a podcast now uh, on the real network might also be another person who at some point maybe considers going back to radio is we going to turn radio 2000 breakfast into a form of podcast with the flavor or is he going to keep it mainstream fully or is he going to keep it mainstream with a flavor of podcast and what's the agreement and what's that going to look like that's going to be interesting maybe can do what dj fresh used to do because fresh on his i think it was drive time if i'm not mistaken i think it was on five He'd, he'd add, or was it breakfast on Metro before Abba Spectacular took over? He'd bring in comedy skits, stand-up comedy. Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, whoever. So I wonder if DJ Spoo is going to maybe have like podcast segments that he plays on the breakfast show where he says things like, you know, on podcast and chill last week, Mac G and Saul sat down with Black Coffee and they discussed this thing. Listen to what Black Coffee had to say. And then you play like five minutes of Black Coffee on podcast and chill. You know, I had an interview on the Hustlers Corner with Joshua Maponga, speak about this issue, listen to what Joshua Maponga had to say about this, and then he plays a skit. I don't know if he's going to be bringing something like that. That would be interesting to see. Some people have already said this, and I understand why, because it's a conversation Spoo and I have also had offline in the past. If DJ Spoo was to invite me to join him on Radio 2000, would he join? Would I join? <laughs> Woo! It sounds like a no-brainer. Obviously, I join. I mean, it's radio. It's national footprint. But my personality is not like other people, man. I, uh, I care about numbers and reach. But I care about freedom, uncensorship, um, more. Uh, I've said to DJ Spoo, anything he needs me for, I'm there. If he ever needs me to come and host the Hustlers Corner and have capacity, I'm there. If he needs me to be a guest on the Hustlers Corner, I'm there. If he needs me to go and speak at an, at an event on his behalf, I'm there. If he needs me to try and connect him with someone, I'm there. If he needs me to put more fire on my podcasts, I'm there. Um, if he needs me to come on radio with him as a sidekick, I'm there. I just worry about a hey, six to nine before it is early morning. So there'd be the issue of time, number one. Number two, I'm not a mainstream radio guy, so I literally need to learn from scratch. I don't have a qualification in radio. It would kind of be sad for kids that do have a qualification, but I'd be willing to learn. I'm a teachable guy. I'd follow Smooth's directive. If he wants me to come in there and have intellectual conversation, if he'd like me to come in there and bring in guests, my guests, and have maybe a 30, 20 minute segment of podcasting within a radio show, I'm willingly happy to do that. If you'd like me to send some guests to the radio show, I can do that. Um, but I'm currently conflicted. And if we were to have that conversation, I'm actually not sure if I'd say yes completely. I love my freedom. I love the fact that I can disappear for two weeks and no one knows. Because my podcast episodes keep dropping that I filmed three months back. I get to live my life. It would feel like I'm going back to corporate. So it would be something I'd have to think about. But because I'm committed to Usbu and... He's a brother of mine and, and we work together and we understand each other to a large degree. I'd say yes. I'd say yes with a lot of T's and C's and I'd tell him it's probably going to be temporary. But I'm going to try and stay on for as long as possible. Let me maybe commit six months and, and see how it goes. Let's not sign anything. Uh, I'll come through even if I'm working for free just so I can learn, so I can be in that space. It's chilled. But it's not something I'm hoping for. I am not hoping that DJ Spoo invites me to Radio 2000. I am hoping that DJ Spoo makes the breakfast show on Radio 2000 one of the best in the country. 
and I hope that he uses that platform to bring in more talents you guys have never heard of. And I hope that he carries on being himself, the hustling spirit, putting people on, educating you guys, and and I don't know if he's gonna be allowed to promote more fire on the platform. It's gonna be really cool if that can happen, because that'll be a really great deal. Or if on the other hand, more fire is gonna be buying advertising slots. Maybe he's not only bringing himself, but also bringing an advertiser to the station. That's important to note from a business perspective that radio, like TV, like newspaper, like magazine, like podcast, are just platforms for attention capital. Radio happens to be audio, but a lot of radio has now moved to audio visual. So you can actually watch the radio show and listen to it as well. So Smooth probably going to make it audio visual. That's going to be another, maybe one of the wishes that I have, that it becomes an audio visual radio breakfast show. Um, so just like that platform with attention capital, it brings in listeners, brings in viewers. And now that you've got, how do you monetize? You monetize through advertising. All these other platforms I mentioned, advertising. And if you're coming to a radio show or radio station and you're saying, I can already book business. I can bring more fire to pay money here. I can bring, um, let's say the Penalism Community Branches as a non-profit organization have got money to advertise. Penalism Community Branches, I've already signed. They're going to be buying slots here. DJ Smoo uh, has connections to Theo Baloy at Batu. We've already signed Ipatu. Likao uh, Sihuana with Drip, we've already signed Drip. So he might even be bringing money and say, look, I'm bringing advertising already. So this is already like a valuable deal for you guys. I'm not sure, we'll see. Maybe he's gonna bring Nota on radio. That would be very interesting for the audience. I know Nota's like me, he loves his freedom of expression. And I, I don't know how long it lasts being censored in a space like that. I mean, Abu Mekchi got fired. Uh, Abu Smoo have gotten fired. Abu Fresh have gotten fired. Fresh got fired for saying Sunari. Uh, Mekchi is another person that people are like, I wonder if Mekchi is gonna go back to radio. But I think podcast and chill is a huge success. I know they're doing a national tour now, so. I don't know if it would even make sense for him to go back to radio. So, yeah, those are some of my thoughts, my concerns, my wishes, like I said. Anele and, and the Breakfast Club that she has are brilliant. Um, I think it's... It's a Chakaranda. Wherever Anele is sit. Anele's breakfast show is really dope. Um, DJ Fresh had a dope breakfast show. Um, yeah, Thibaut Touch, man. As much as I can knock his accent, and I used to not like that he name drops, and hey, we have an forger, but Thibaut Touch, man, is really good at what he does. He's brilliant at radio. And I remember on Metro FM years ago when I didn't even like him, I was like, I may not like this guy, but his radio show is fucking dope. So there are people that are good. And look, the other thing in life is maybe some of us are just good for certain platforms and not others. Angas, you might put me on mainstream radio and I fucking suck balls. You might put me on TV as a presenter. I've got Dr. C. Zempofu Walsh, who got a great deal on Unfiltered on SABC. I think partly, thanks partly to SMWX. I might suck. You might put me on, what else is out there? Oh, writing, I can write. I don't mind writing. Because I've written before for magazines and newspapers as a contributor. So that's not too bad. But you put a person on the wrong platform and you're like, ah. You give Mac G a TV show as a presenter and maybe he sucks. Maybe he's not Tube Tube. You put Tube Tube on a podcast and maybe he's not a great podcast host. Some people are just good at certain things and suck at others. Some people are brilliant at certain things and are just, just good at others. So we'll see. But a lot of people are excited about DJ Smoo coming back on radio. And tomorrow morning, 1st of April, if I'm not mistaken, um, we get to listen to Oi Oi, number one Knox man, Smoo uh, doing his thing. Uh, Radio is his water and he's a fish. And I know he's just going to be back in there like he never left. We just have to see how podcasting has tainted him. One of my concerns, one of my big concerns is Spoo has become a free man. He's become a wild man. It's going to be interesting watching him navigate his wildness on mainstream. With about BCCSA. Um... They're having to consistently show up every morning at the same time. Um, I do have belief it's going to be great, but I'm hoping, not, I'm hoping to have conversations with him and to hear his honest truth on how the adjustment, how easy 
what difficult the adjustment is from podcasting and freedom, freedom to now going back to like a corporate gig where your time is no longer really yours per se. It's going to be interesting. What would be cool is also maybe to pre-record certain radio breakfast shows or segments of it and maybe spoo only remotely from overseas, somewhere else, just comes in to, for the people to do the news, the traffic, and maybe for him to say certain things that are current affairs. That might be interesting because media is changing. Some of us are driving the change. I still get people now on podcast episodes saying I must keep quiet and let the guests speak. And I'm like, it's not an interview. I do conversations. I'm a conversationalist. So if I talk, I talk because I'm on this platform to talk. Not to just ask questions and keep quiet. But I understand it's a new type of media for people. Where the guest gives their opinion and then I give mine. The guest tells a story. I tell mine. Where in certain podcast episodes, I will talk more than the guest. It is what it is. It's a conversation. If the guest has a lot to unpack, they talk much more than me. If I have stuff to say, I will say it. Yes, there's something to be said about don't interrupt when someone's on a, on a roll. That, those are things to learn. Yes, there are times to be like, look, maybe the guest is a bit uncomfortable. Obviously, we're constantly trying to sharpen what we do, but it's conversation. But we're changing the landscape of media across the world. Patrick Bet David is one of the people murdering it in, in America. Um, in the alternative media space. Um, Abo Candace Owens and the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, even though Candace Owens is left now, have been other very, very interesting spaces for that. So we'll see how media changes and we'll keep pushing. For me, the important thing is to have uncensored conversations, deliver education, deliver the truth, uncover bullshit, bogus conspiracies, and then find ways to make money. I'm still trying to figure out ways to make money so that, you know, when I make a video, I can be like, thank you, this video was sponsored by whoever so that you guys can enjoy it for free and you don't have to subscribe. And if we can't get sponsors because maybe the things I say are too controversial for brands, then I'm going to have to beg you guys, please subscribe and please pay money so that I don't have to go out there and ask people to sponsor because then you guys are going to label me a sellout and captured and I'm like, but I need to eat. And you guys are not willing to give me a little bit of money to go and research and travel and get guests and buy equipment and pay staff where must I get the money from? Because you guys don't want to pay me. I'm going to have to go and get money from someone you guys don't like it. So, or a nice mix. Sponsors that are aligned to your brands and uh, people that donate money. Like Pen, I'd like you to be as raw and filtered as possible. Tell us how you really feel about Rob Hersoff. Tell us how you really feel about Johan Rupert. Tell us how you really feel about Cyril Ramaphosa and Jacob Zuma. Tell us how you feel about feminism. Tell us how you feel about religion and the churches. Tell us how you feel about the ANC and you're not hearing me being diplomatic. Look, they're all trying. We need to consider the scope and you're like, ah, fuck this guy. He's fucking not being honest. But that requires people to support the work we're doing. It's the reason why I have a dope conversation with Papa Ano Pasha. Really dope episode if you haven't seen it on the Penwell channel. Dope conversations, Papa Ano Pasha. She told me before that she wants to bash me on my relationship with Rob Herself. I said, please feel free to come do so. I didn't say, aye, aye, Rob is, is, is off limits. Ah, Penwell is captured. What? Ah, dumb minds will obviously say that. I gave Upapano the right to say exactly how she feels and exactly how other people feel. And then I didn't even need to respond, but I was like, I'd like to explain my relationship with Rob. But I also said Rob is free to speak for himself. He's a grown man with platforms. I like those uncensored conversations. I like people criticizing that I bring Rutendo Matinyarare. Why are you bring the Zimbabwean to discuss South African issues? And I'm like, that's fair. Let's, let's speak about it. Why? And if not Rutendo, then who? You bring in Aiko Kumalo. You bring in politicians, South African politicians. You bring in other minds to discuss South African politics. You ask some of these people on Zimbabwean politics. You know, and, and we have a conversation. You, you have issues with white people. I sit with the white people you have issues with so that they can speak. But then when I sit with them, I'm a sellout. Hey, <laughs> hey. I sit with the same supposed racist whites so they can say their side. Then I get to share my opinion. It's mine. It's not yours. I don't represent the majority of blacks. Not a politician. You guys don't pay me to be a pro-black activist. I'm my own man. And I know it bugs some people, but who the fuck cares? I'm my own man. But in that sit-down, 
you get to listen. And in the comments, they're not closed. You get to say exactly how you feel. You get to voice yourself so that I can read your comments, so that whoever's listening, the guys at Orania can read your comments, and the rest of us can engage. We can respond, other people can criticize you, other people can agree with you, and we engage healthily. It's not closed. But you're not fucking forcing me to have your opinion, and you're not forcing the next person to have your opinion either. It's a three-way three -way conversation. I sit with someone who engage, and then you get to engage via the comments. And if not via the comments, you can go on TikTok and make a reaction video. You can go on YouTube and make a, a reaction video. Bro, bro, what the fuck are we trying to do but to engage and get you guys in there? But you guys want to bully us into fucking being activists for Masimba. platform so that we can have engagement and healthy engagements that is the real definition of being captured if i was to go out there and every time i'm on a platform i speak like an angry black person as if i'm captured by some pro-black organization or pro-black billionaire to give me money to bash people in orania to bash afri forum to bash rob Hersoff, to bash johan rupert to bash everyone because you're angry and i'm saying let's engage healthily and I sit with these people outside of the emotions and I raise some of the concerns. But people are saying Orania is a white's only town. What do you say to that? And you allow the person in a free, relaxed, unjudgmental space to literally answer. You ask the guys at Afri Forum, but are you guys not racist? And you allow them to answer. If you think they are lying, the comments are there, boy. If you think they are lying, you can make a video. If you think my opinion is shit, you also allow to criticize it. Just don't try and bully me and force me to have some black view that serves you. I'm not you. I'm not you. And every now and then I, I point fingers at the people that bash me. At how they are huge hypocrites of the same bullshit they accuse me of. Penuel is a sellout. Hey, oh Penuel, we can't trust them. And I'm like, you refuse to use black platforms, of which we have some in this country, social media. You do not support black media, newspapers, television. You do not buy from black businesses. You do not work for black businesses. You are not funding pro-black political parties. You are not using your stock file money on your church money to develop black institutions and black schools. You are taking your money and giving it to white businesses. You are working for white businesses. You want to move to white suburbia. You want to speak this good English. But then you want to criticize me. I must be Jesus Christ that gets crucified for your hypocrisy and your cognitive dissonance as if you sent me. When Stephen Bantubigo was killed, when Robert Sobuwe died alone, when Chris Hanyu was assassinated, you didn't do a damn fucking thing to avenge them. A damn fucking thing. You've never sent one rand to the Hani family, to the Bigo family. You've never sent a dirty rand to the Sobuwe family. But you're telling me you're pro-black. You're fake, man. You're fake pro-black and you're fake pan-Africanist. You just talk shit because it's cool. You call us like talkers and keyboard warriors, but you're the problem. Because you claim to stand for something, but your lived reality is you actually hate what you claim to stand for. You hate it. You actually hate it. But then when I point that out, instead of taking accountability and be like, hey, Penn is right. I must set up a stock fell. And let's see if we can support Andy Limitama at, at Black First, Land First. And let's get our people the land back. Hey, Upen is right. As he was speaking about Soltech, I think we need to build a Zulu school. So I'm going to put money together and we're going to build a Zulu school. Hey, Upen is right. We keep supporting these Pakistanis puzzle shops, but then we complain about unemployment, black unemployment. Let me actually buy from black people. And you do something about it. Instead of being a hypocrite and pointing fingers at me when I've constantly said, 
I am no longer pro-black. I am no longer pan-Africanist. I used to be. You can go to www.buyblack.org. I think it's buyblack.org. That is the website we set up to push a buy black movement. I left. There are guys there. You can join them. You can build with them. You've got Andile Mnatamas, BLF. Join. Help them. You can look for other pro-black organizations. Support Vuyo Zumula at African Transformation Movement, the ATM. Support these people. Don't worry about me. Go to your Okasi school and go donate your money there. Go volunteer your services there. Go to Mama that sells fruit and veg and say, Mama, I want to donate so you can have a gazebo or so that you can have a structure. Mama, I want to donate so that the fruit and veg you're buying are not from ZZ2 and other and Wilderklaver and Clover and other big farms, but please support black-owned farms. I'm going to support you, Mama, so that you can... Go do it. I'm not there anymore. I'm supporting good people. Black, white, Indian, colored, foreign, illegal, foreign, which is illegal and a crime and they must be deported according to our, our laws. I support good people, man. And if you're a white person and you're good to me and you're willing to work together to build a better country, let's work. I'll raise some of the issues of black people. I'll raise some of my personal issues. You can do the same. But at the end of the day, we must then put our heads down and must fucking work. On smooth fucking work, Papa. Smooth craft. This, it's, this country is not going to work itself. Here the land sal ni the self work ni. Ons moet ons moet die eens wie is wat werk, wat die land werk, wat die land bou. It's us. But it's easy for people to vent from social media because it's cool, it's like cool. And we get criticized of a lot of things, but we're working in the background. And you may not see it, but some of the businesses I put on, it's the work that's been done in the background. Some of the businesses you're seeing, some of the people that you're seeing are people I work with in the background. It's just I know you guys are haters, so you obviously are always trying to destroy a person's hustle. So we don't speak about it, but we put these people on to give shoutouts. Sfiso Madon, Jombela Construction, black owned construction company. Nontlantla Mangani, black owned catering business, and she's built her own um, catering academy, the Kushinda Academy. Dalipani Banks. Spaza Eats, competing with Uber Eats, Analytics X. Um, Miranda Nchangase, Nchangase. Star Quality Academy, teaching people how to be professional actors and artists on top of the fact that she owns an agency. Uh, she's got her own brick manufacturing business. As much as she's beautiful and she slays on Instagram, she's also hustling. We've been promoting more fire. We've been promoting trip. We've been promoting Ipatu. We speak about our black coffee. We shout out about Tusombedu. Like, you guys don't see it because like, some of your brains are so damaged that you miss the whole fucking thing. You'd rather nitpick sitting with Rob Hersoff, sitting with Oranya, sitting with Afri Forum. Three things out of like 50. When you're sitting with a pan-Africanist Joshua Maponga, the next thing you criticize is his Zimbabwean. Ah, Stale no mkulun tsingi eza. Stale with the politicians. Got anfunu gula lele. Anfunu hui buga nine ibugu e nishu tey. Nga tinki ingi mean. You just wanna fucking bash and talk shit. Anyways, I was making this video to give a shout out to Ata. E no spuru ya papu. So you can come beside the front page of the, of his contract there. Palile Ata. Ata spusi so liope. Uh, shout out to Art, I mean, we we'll see only up uh, on his new gig at Radio 2000. A new chapter in his life, constantly reinventing himself. Um, he had cryptocurrencies at some point. Shout out to Kray Chabesi. Uh, I owe Jay Kray Chabesi a video, by the way. You know, I need to promote his crypto university. Maybe I'll give it a shout out here as well. Um, and I need to drop the link when I do make that video because it used to cost money. Now he's doing it free of charge uh, to teach people about crypto. And I've explained why I support the idea of learning about crypto um, there are people that are working and we're trying our best we're trying our best anyways pen you all the black pen man again if you're a true christian i hope you're enjoying your easter sunday if you're a fake christian hey go get your easter eggs man and get go for fucking easter egg hunts and whatever the hell fake christians do uh, but to my true christians man i hope you have a great easter sunday and I really hope you'll travel safely on the roads. 
you guys as Christians really, really need to look, relook this, this pilgrimage thing to home during Easter. Because a lot of people are dying. We can avoid the deaths. We can't speak about crime. We can't speak about diseases. We can't speak about eating healthy. We can't speak about all these things. And then you go die in a car accident because you claim you're going to pray and worship. I don't think your Christian God or your Christian or your Jesus Christ supports reckless decisions. And I think there are smarter ways to praise your Lord and Savior and to, to be rooted in your belief system without making decisions that put your life in danger. Maybe even like stagger the pilgrimages home and be like, not all of us will travel home these weekends. During this weekend, that's when the these people travel home so that there isn't congestion on the roads. Or better yet, maybe, let's speak about fixing our, our rail network. Even though the ANC has destroyed it and Praveen Kordan and Cyril, they're trying to sell it off. Let's speak about, if, if not them, then let's build our own railway. So that when people go home, they don't have to worry about car accidents. And people can actually train home. Or maybe fly home. You can fly. Let's get our grannies and, and grandfathers and aunts and uncles on planes. Much safer. Much safer. And if they're going from Joburg to Durban, it's a one hour flight. They don't have to be on the road for six hours. If they're going from Joburg to Cape Town, it's a two hour flight. They don't have to be in a bus for 20 hours, whatever the hell it is, or to the Eastern Cape for 13 hours. Let's fly them. Let's save a bit of money. Let's set up these funds. This is the Easter fund. Get the churches to raise that money and be like, our congregation flies because we're tired of every Easter weekend. The first thing we do is we have to send our sympathies and condolences for congregants that died on the way here. That, that's not smart, man. And maybe your Jesus Christ and your Christian God has sent me to tell you that the message on this Easter Sunday, speak to Mfundisi, speak to the church leaders and be like, this guy who penned, who's not a Christian, he's a penalist. He was saying, can we not find smarter tra uh, transport, travel ways, worship ways to travel? We had COVID lockdown and people could um, stream sessions. Can you guys not pray all night prayers via streaming without having to travel? You save money. That money can actually go to the church. That money can actually go to building your family. Do you need to be stuffed on the back of a paki? Stuffed in a taxi to travel for so long? It's stuffy, it might smell, it's unhealthy, it's dangerous. No, man. It's like people that die of obesity. And, and these lifestyle related illnesses killing yourself in real time because you're constantly eating junk with your eyes wide open do you need to eat three burgers back to back do you need to guzzle two liters of coke in the morning and two liters of coke at night do you need to be smoking like a chimney really you can see you're overweight bro you're sweating you can't sleep at night you can feel your body's heavy but you're like killing yourself in the way you're living and we must feel sorry for you are such a shame, died from diabetes. So especially avoid. Ay. Nah man. Anyways. I normally struggle to read your, your comments here on, on Instagram because Every time I scroll up, this thing like takes me back, whatever. And I normally do my lives on Facebook, which I prefer, but Facebook currently won't let me do lives. So, yeah. Let's see here. I think what would be ideal is obviously for me to like make the screen black and just listen to my voice, but some people like staring at my pretty face. RKVA interiors. We should support people who want to work. Simple as that. Um, Renee Dash Peter. Renee Dash. Renee Dash Peter. Wonderful. We're with you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mashe. What's this? Mashe. G O L G. Facts, bro. Truly. Uh, Truly. D Legacy. Truthfully said. Stop. Trying to go up slowly so it doesn't go up. Uh, okay. 
Renee Dash Peter, how about we hop on this NASA thing I texted you about prepare now? I'm gonna check that out. Uh, NASA is the space agency in America, I think. The national something like space, something something. Zizile Makubela ended off with we will propel us forward. Let's see what they were saying earlier here. Uh, oh Zizil, I can't find the first part of your thing. Oh, I need to say this. What I've started doing, by the way, in comments, is whenever people are in comments talking shit, I ignore them. I don't want to give you guys a spotlight. You can go fucking be miserable somewhere on your own. Um, Sela? Silala. Dinche. What is it that you different, do different if you had the chance to do that black uh, forum thing you once talked about? I would copy the model of Afri Forum. I think it's a brilliant uh, concept. I would not focus on black. Black is not a value system. It's one of the things a lot of black people are missing. Afri Forum is for Afrikaners. It's not for white people. It's not a white forum. So find a cultural base or a religious base. You know, it could be like the Muslims or the Jewish Board of Deputies. Find a cultural base or a value base and then build on that. Uh, being black is not good enough. Buying blindly from a black business does not necessarily propel the black agenda. Because that black business might be a front it might be a black person that's going to take all your resources and give them to other people that you don't support. So I'd copy what Afri Forum is doing. I think they're pretty dope. Let's see. I'm going to take this. Ah, did it go all the way down again? Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, it went down. Anyways, I think maybe I'll shut it down here. Uh, please save this live. This is golfing with me too. I'm going to download this live and then I'm going to upload it on my YouTube channel, the Penwell channel. So you can go on the Penwell channel if you missed the beginning. And it's going to upload here on Instagram as well to watch from the beginning. So, Renee Dash Peter. I hope I'm not butchering your name. I've been selected to lead a NASA project in South Africa. Want to get society and the youth involved uh, in collaboration with the SA Space Agency. I'm a pilot and drone subject matter expert. Um, so I guess we need to chat about that. I need to find out specifically what it is that you're looking for uh, and what you're hoping I can speak about or what platform you'd like to have to discuss this. Because it's all about creating opportunities for people out there, seeing if there's potential ways to make money or create value outside of money for myself, yourself and other people out there. I think it would be really dope. And I mean, getting, getting South African kids, man, to speak about space travel would be a game changer. You know, kids are not even speaking about being pilots anymore. It makes me sad. So... Yeah, I struggle with the comments section here. Like, I tried to go up, but eh, there's a lizard in the background here that's trying to attack me. Hey, Baba, where's Allah? I'm going to go. I'm sorry, lizard. Does it keep going back down? Let's see? I'm struggling to go up. Shit. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> Lelo, the realtor. Lelo N. Sabona Pen. Hi, Lelo. Only Cash and Peace speak about DJ Smooth joining Radio 2000. Maybe he went back because of his love for radio and not because of the salary. Definitely. Definitely. I think Smooth makes a lot of money, man, in the various things that he does. So I also don't think it's about salary, but you never know. This lizard's here. Hey, this guy wants my fucking ghost. Okay, looks like he's running away. Maybe you wanted to come and join the video. <laughs> How lazy the lizard. Wilson underscore YPS. Easter weekend was actually not for Christians. I think people that are more knowledgeable can maybe school us on that. I know Joshua Maponga has spoken about Easter as well in the past. Kamuhelo. Got pen, I see you. Has it gone all the way up again? Wow. Ah, whatever. Love you guys, man. Have a great and blessed Sunday. I'll catch up with you guys again soon. As always, uh, the panel show drops tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Um, who do we have tomorrow? 
Jeez, um, Ernst von Sale from Afri Forum tomorrow, um, challenging him on white genocide and farm murders, and also unpacking why I left Afri Forum as a paying member. Um, I think it's a really great chat to have as well, or a great chat to join, join into. Wednesday mornings, dope conversations, 9 a.m. as well. Uh, I'm not sure who the guest is for this week. I'll actually check, I'll actually check. And then, yeah, there's going to be just a whole lot more political content leading up to the 29th of May, 2024 for South Africans. And in the political chats, I want to discuss politics, political structures. Um, I want to speak about alternative systems of gov governance, very important for me. And then I need to give a shout out um, to the Penalism Community Branches, the PCPs. There are already people that have joined. We've got 10 groups, one for each province in South Africa and one for people outside of South Africa um, to take ownership of their communities. Inspired by AfriForum, Orania, inspired by Stephen Bantubigo's Black Community Programs, inspired by Huey P. Newton's Black, 10 Point Black Panther Party, the ten, they are 10 points, inspired by um, North Korea's Juche, Juche principle, which is about doing for yourself. Um, inspired by some of the political branches, by the way, that do work in their communities. Um, inspired by Gift of the Givers and the way they solve problems. Um, yeah, if you'd like to join, drop me a DM. Drop me a DM, I'll send you a link. Whatever province you're in, or if you're outside of South Africa, I'll drop you a link for the groups outside of South Africa. The idea is to take ownership of our communities and stop begging government, stop begging um, NPOs, charities to help us and to find the solutions within ourselves. Very important is to walk around your neighborhood every day if possible for 15 minutes. See if there are any problems, leaking pipes, fences that are broken, crime hotspots, guys that are smoking in Nyawupe, uh, drug alcohol problems. Um, take a walk around, patrol, see if there's any dodgy characters that need to be highlighted to your community members. Pick up litter. So when you walk around, walk around with a plastic bag. Just pick up a bit of litter. Yes, there are people that are paid to do that, but a lot of our townships, men, are filthy. And it's because people just don't want to pick up litter. Pick up litter and make it a clean space. Um, exercise, of course, very big in your communities to exercise. If you've got a school in your community, find out how you can volunteer 30 minutes a week. If you've got a church in your community, you don't even need to be religious. Go find out what programs the church has. Maybe they do soup kitchens. Maybe they're teaching kids how to play instruments. Um, could be the keyboard it could be the drums and you have the skill or you want to learn the skill go join find sports teams in your area go volunteer 30 minutes you don't have to be a sports coach but you can help them maybe with um, exercise regiments you can maybe sponsor 100 rand you can maybe help them get kit um, you can maybe capture their stuff on social media to highlight what they're doing there's so much value we can add in our own communities so i want to bring that idea of community work from each of us back um, and, and to uplift our communities. Penalism community branches. Uh, and that's going to be how I probably end up building my penalism churches as well. Uh, infiltrating these spaces, politics, schools, churches, getting involved in community programs and making sure that, that people are involved in building really, really dope communities for themselves and stop outsourcing the solutions to government and, and, and. Pen you all the black pen. I'm out. Cheers.